It is Tuesday, November 1st, 2020. What con Urado Zuguego, Joe Delro, New Jets, and welcome to the Gahnawage COVID-19 Task Force on this election day in the United States. Normally we wouldn't be talking about that, but it is such big news that I think we would be remiss if we didn't mention it. Uh, we have some news here in Gahnawage regarding uh, the task force and of course uh, COVID-19. Lloyd Phillips, the Commissioner of Public Safety, will be joining us in just a little while. And also developments from the uh, Mohawk Council of Gahnawage in terms of the liaison to the task force. And uh, it'll be made official on Monday, but joining us will be the new liaison, the second liaison, of course, uh, to the task force. Let's welcome Rizanayas Clinton Phillips. Clinton. Good afternoon, Gnawagahrono. I guess if you look outside, it looks more like good evening uh, with the time change that happened this weekend. Um, so I hope a lot of you are here listening in and watching. And uh, I just want to let you all know that um, I guess it's been a rough last week, uh, more, more than that at this point, uh, be, today being Tuesday. And um, so there has been some changes. I have been, um, I guess, successful in getting the the position that was once held by Chief Harry Rice. Um, I can promise everybody that I'll give 110% of myself to this task force. I think the work, the duty of this task force is uh, paramount over everything else right now in what we face in Ganawage and in the world at, at, at that as well. Um, it's not an easy position. I think the entire community can agree to that. You know. Um, I, for one, will admit, you know, I've made mistakes in my past. I've made tons of mistakes. Some I wish I can go back. Some, you know, not so important in life in the bigger scheme of things. But nevertheless, errors have, you know, happened, mistakes. Uh, I wish I could do some redos. That can't happen. That's not what life is about. And I think the real thing is about, you know, when we, when we make an error in life, in judgment, lack of judgment, a lapse of in judgment, um, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's how we learn from those errors, what we do to recover. And I think that's the important lesson, not just here today in what's going on in Ganawage, but in life in general. You know, people may make an error in going somewhere where they shouldn't go, Maybe, you know, going visit somebody somewhere else, maybe that shouldn't be the case, you know, and, and I get people's frustration, you know, once upon a time people used to call the middle of winter, you know, people were getting cabin fever because people were locked up, cold weather, you couldn't do things outside, couldn't go anywhere, so, you know, come spring people always had cabin fever, and I think when you look at COVID and us being cooped up for the last eight, nine months now, I think it's no different than, than, you know, the feeling of cabin fever. Nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to be stuck indoors. Nobody wants to be separated from family. Nobody wants to not be able to do things that we took for granted, i.e. jumping in the car and taking a quick trip to Plattsburgh just to go do grocery shopping or just to change the scenery. Do I want to do that? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I guess, you know, the things are for safety reasons, for looking out for the community, from learning from, um, you know, things that are happening in the United States, things that are happening in Europe, things that are happening in Asia, trends across the globe. What's best for Ganawage is not doing those type of activities right now. Hopefully, one day soon, we all will be able to do that. And I'm confident, I'm confident, Ganawage, that that day is not that far down the road. You know, we just need to be patient. We need to comply with what is being requested of us as citizens, of people, as people of Ganawage. Nobody wants to be that person that did not listen to recommendations and ended up getting your grandmother sick, getting your grandfather sick to the point where he could die or died, or getting your grandchildren sick because you wanted to do A, B, or C. I get it. We're all human. Like I said, I've made multitude of errors in my lifetime and I wish I could go back and change them. I can't. 
what I can do is promise you, the people of Ganawage, I will give 110% of myself on this task force because I think this task force is what is needed. None of these people who sit on the task force wanted this job. And you've heard me say that before in the past on different me uh, mediums, but none of them had asked for this job. They all still have their jobs at their own organization or their own units to do on top of handling the COVID-19 issue that is hitting the world like we've never seen anything hit us before in our lifetimes. So I'm asking you is to please, please, you know, think of their commitment. Think of their dedication. These people are working six, seven days a week to make you and your family safe. Do errors happen? Yes. But think about it. If people were watching you 24-7, I think likely you would slip up once or twice. We're all human. None of us are perfect. I am far from being perfect. You know, I've made mistakes. You know, in haste, I've ran into a, a local uh, corner store, forgot situation, I had no mask on. As soon as I walked in, hey, 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 your mask. I ran back out to the car. You know, I've done that in two or three places over the last seven or eight months. I walked into the bank just two weekends ago and it was dark, it was like 9 p.m. And when I walked up the stairs, I looked at the door, I saw the sign about the mask, triggered my memory, oh man, run back to my car, get my mask and put it on. But it's things that, you know, whether I'm thinking of something else or one of the 90 things I have to think about in, you know, in preparation of tomorrow's meeting or, you know, the next day's meeting, you, you forget, sometimes you forget add COVID on top of that and the restrictions and the stress of everything COVID related. You know, personally, uh, you know, my family had a big loss not too long ago. You know, just, I think six weeks ago, I buried two aunts, my dad's sister and my mom's sister, both on the same day, both on the same Friday. We literally buried my aunt at in one o'clock in the afternoon and my dad's sister my aunt Eva's funeral was that same afternoon so I mean you want to talk about stresses and stress levels and not being able to really you know say goodbye to people in the way that we are accustomed to and to be with my family the way we are accustomed to is not an easy task for anyone to do we look at our numbers, we are under, I believe our numbers as of today is 38 positive since day one, which is remarkable. If you look at Shadagi, I believe their numbers are hovering close to two, uh, 550. Shadagi is not 20 times the size of Ganawage. So what is Ganawage doing that's different than Shadagi? What are we doing right? I don't mind telling you, I was on a Zoom call all afternoon and it was with the deputy uh, of Shadagi, the writing of Shadagi, Madam uh, Shazi. And when we told her what our COVID numbers are, she literally put her hand to her mouth and said, what are you doing right? So for people on the outside looking into Ganawage, people who are, you know, polished politicians, to say that, that means a lot. That tells me we are doing everything we possibly can. And the people who are helping to make this a reality and keeping us safe, your mother, your father, your grandparents, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your community members, safe. Everybody who is on this task force is doing what they have to be doing, what they should be doing, what they're dedicated to be doing and I think we all, every single one of us in this community, rather than trying to rip people apart, because that's not who we are. And I'm not blaming anybody or pointing fingers at anybody. If I have to point at anybody, it'll be, I'll point my finger at COVID-19 because it's making us act, maybe not in a way we are accustomed to, and certainly not the way Mohawks of Ganawage treat each other.
I've thought about this all day, how to approach this topic today, talking to you for my first time being uh, associated with the task force and not necessarily an elected chief of the MCK, but I want to talk to you, everybody, every single one of you, as Clinton Phillips. I know what you are thinking. I know what's in your heart. I know you are scared. I know you are terrified. So am I. So am I. So is everybody on the task force. So is the world. And we have good reason to. When we set out a recommendation, all I can do is beg you, please follow the recommendations because it is not the task of the task force to make your life miserable or to add stress or heavy hearts, heavy burdens to your already heavy, heavy, heavy uh, uh, burdens of COVID living. It's for a reason. It's to keep you safe. It's to ensure that our death rate remains at zero. And we are lucky that it's at zero. Look around us, put on the news, turn on your radio, open a newspaper. This is around the world and people are dying. People are dying. So tonight when you say good night to your babies and kiss them in their cribs or putting your little ones to sleep, be thankful. Be thankful that we have people who are dedicated at making the difference. And I think and I truly believe that without the task force, without the, the people like Dr. Goche, like Lisa, like Lloyd, like everybody else on the task force who is giving their day, their night, their weekends to help protect you, your family, your household, your community, we owe them some gratitude. And as I end this discussion right now with you, I leave you with those words. And thank you very much, Nyawakoa Clinton. Very well put. Again, uh, there will be, to make it official, uh, Clinton will be uh, designated as the, um, on the portfolio for the COVID-19 task force on Monday, but he, he's already started the job. While well, speaking of already on the job, this uh, gentleman here has been busy for, from day one and before. I was going through some of the documents uh, in the past few days about COVID-19 and before declarations were even made, I realized that while well, we had put out a couple of press releases and uh, our public safety uh, unit was already on it and uh, had already done a lot of work ahead of time. So it's been busy and there's been no break since then. And so uh, with that, I'd like to bring on the busiest guy in Kahnawake, the Commissioner of Public Safety, Lloyd Phillips. Lloyd. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you very much, Clinton. I appreciate uh, your words and uh, support yeah, you expressed for the task force. And it's, um, it's good to hear, you know, um, um, somebody in, in your position, obviously a, a, a prominent community member, but as well as an elected representative of, of, of the community to speak so passionately uh, about the task force and, and uh, showing your, your support. It, it really does uh, mean a lot. Uh, I'm uh, glad to have you um, affiliated now with the task force and uh, be more involved than, than, than you were in the past as, a, as an elected uh, representative. Uh, you know, uh, Clinton and I worked together uh, for, for a number of years when we were both on council and uh, I look forward to, uh, to, to picking up where that left off and, and uh, using some of his knowledge and input to, to improve upon what we already have in, in place. So, uh, so uh, thank you for those words. Uh, I just want to you know, talk a little bit about numbers because you know we, a lot of times we, we don't talk on, on numbers uh, too much because uh, a number is a number, but sometimes it's, it's important to remind ourselves uh, of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, today there was an announcement made by uh, the government of Quebec of 871 cases uh, in the province of Quebec, slightly lower than it has been uh, over the past while, but still averaging uh, about a thousand uh, cases per day over a seven day roll on average. So, you know, it, it still is um, uh, concerning. Uh, numbers are stable, but they're stable at a high rate. 
Uh, and so we have to be very mindful of that. You know, and we also look a little closer at some of the numbers, uh, rather than looking at the, in, sometimes in the entire province of Quebec, you, know, you look towards you know, Montreal, uh, our neighbors you know, to the north, you know, they obviously have the, the largest number. You know, they're averaging uh, about 200 per day. But then if you cross the bridge and come on our side, you know, the Monte Regis area, as they call it, South Shore region, you know, they're only second to Montreal Island. And you know, they're averaging around 275, uh, uh, sorry, 125, uh, 100, 125 to 175 cases uh, per day. So uh, they are very um, uh, close to the numbers that uh, the city of Montreal is, um, is, is uh, witnessing as we speak. So we have to be mindful of that. Because obviously these are our neighbors; they are literally surrounding our community. So, uh, what's happening out there uh, does does have uh, impact impacts on us. And as we said in the past, you know, uh, that's one of the criteria. You know, we we, we consider when when making decisions uh, as a task force. Uh, you know, another number I want to talk about briefly is is the number of um, uh, infection rates uh, in the Quebec school systems, both pub public and private. Uh, no, in the beginning there was there was a few isolated cases, but as time went on, uh, no, they, those numbers have increased both with the staff members of um, uh, Quebec Health, uh, Quebec uh, Education System, as well as with students. And as of um, October 30th, so last Friday, no, there was 2,474, to be exact, uh, active cases uh, within the Quebec school system. So, uh, no, those are some of, of the numbers that obviously we don't like to see, uh, and it's. Uh, only kind of, if you want to look at it, one uh, slight positive out of there, a lot of these are our younger people and a lot of them you know, will uh, certainly recover from, uh, from COVID-19. However, you know, they also have the possibility of, of spreading that virus you know, to their parents or grandparents, so which again is, is, is still, um, still alarming. Uh, I'm certainly glad that um, the task force along with Gundamwaga Education Center has have taken steps uh, going back a few weeks ago to be proactive uh, to minimize and you know the spread of of, um, of the virus within the community within the school systems that's why we move quickly uh, to to um, remote learning uh, in in the communities in the community with the community schools uh, minimizing the people in, in the classroom to essential uh, uh, service uh, uh, staff as children only uh, to, to minimize that that possibility of contracting the virus you know, those steps you know, were taken at the time we're done in, in a proactive sense so because we, we had a good idea where, where things were heading and, and, and we, we were managed to, uh, to, I guess, put a hold on that so, so we didn't have outbreaks uh, within, within the community. Because an outbreak that would happen uh, within a, the Ganawaga school system, the impacts could be much greater than it would be, say, in, in any school outside uh, the community. Because if a student, say, a, a, a case in a, a a classroom or a school in Montreal, they have students coming from all different municipalities and all, all over the different province going to that school. So when they go home, you know, they're scattered throughout the whole island, island of Montreal. And so if, if there is an outbreak in, this cl in the class, you know, it's spread, the, the impacts are spread throughout the whole island. In Ganawaga, in a sense, we're our own island. You know, we're we're, we're Ganawaga. So if there's an outbreak in, in a school with three, four, five, uh, or six children, all the impacts are felt directly here in our community. So that, that's why we felt we had to be very proactive in, in taking those steps. doesn't mean it's going to stay that way forever. As, as things evolve, as things change, as new information comes available, as things start to stabilize, you know, all the measures that are in place could always be reconsidered and looking at ways to, to safely move forward. Because we understand at the same time, as much as, as, as we're protecting the, the physical health of, of people, we understand that there's a burden on, on, on the students uh, learning from home remotely. There's a burden on, on, on the on parents trying to homeschool and assist their children, as well as the educators. So yes, it, it's a major burden for everybody, but again, uh, if, we, if we stick at it and, and, and stay strong, hopefully as time rolls on, we could gradually start easing those measures and, and, and return back to something that resembles uh, more uh, I guess more normal, uh, and we'll take those you know, step by step. Now, Montreal area is, is still in the um, in still in, in code red, as is much much of uh, the the province of Quebec. Uh, Ganawaga, we still are uh, in red as well. Uh, 
there still is a significant risk of spread of the virus, even though, uh, as Clinton mentioned, you know, there are other things uh, are relatively uh, stable and in, uh, in the community. Uh, things can change on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, so we have to be cognizant of that and we have to remain vigilant uh, and, and, and stay strong because that's what got us to this point. And I know we say this a lot, but I, I, we can't say it enough that you know, the collective nature of our community is what carries us forward and, and keeps us, us safe. You know, the measures of, of household only are, are still in effect. Again, those are measures that we feel are important and help carry us to where we are now. Uh, if that could be looked at again and will be looked at again, and when, again, when we feel comfortable, you know, we could start looking at re relaxing some of those measures. But everything is, is a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we're also looking forward, you know, we just uh, passed uh, a couple of holidays um, at Thanksgiving uh, recently, uh, as we all know, Halloween. But we're also looking, you know, I mean, Christmas is not very far away. Uh, we already had some inquiries, people asking about Christmas parades and, and certain uh, what they can and cannot do at Christmas. Uh, I think at this point in time, it's safe to say that there won't be any, any parades. It takes many weeks to properly plan a parade, and at this point in time, it's not a recommendation. Uh, so we will be you know, putting out, so again, some recommendations on that, looking at all, all the signs and, and, and ways you know, to have an enjoyable Christmas, uh, and that will be assessed as, as we go forward. With stronger measures now, hopefully you know, we could have uh, ability to have um, um, more family uh, associated with, with, our, with our, um, our Christmas time. It's, uh, we're working closely with uh, mental health experts uh, in the community to uh, also address issues of, of stress and anxiety and, and that uh, impacts directly on looking forward say to Christmas because uh, it is a, a, it should be a fun and enjoyable time but in, in normal life it, it's also a stressful time so uh, no, we're working on, on ways in which we could minimize that, that stress and anxiety on the community and have as normal uh, Christmas with, uh, with your family and loved ones as, as we possibly can. So rest assured, uh, no, a lot of discussion is, is ongoing, uh, a lot of uh, experts being consulted to help guide uh, the direction of our community. We've been doing that since uh, uh, actually February of, 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 uh, of this year and, and like, like Joe mentioned, uh, we were on the job before uh, the pandemic, pandemic was declared, but we've been doing that since the beginning. We'll continue to do that moving forward uh, and, uh, and making sure we, we have um, uh, an enjoyable time uh, throughout the holiday season that will be here before we know it. You know, we just finished um, Halloween. Uh, you know, a lot of recommendations were put forward you know, by the task force on how we can go about, again, having a safe and enjoyable Halloween. And, and, and I'm glad to say you know, it, it was a, a great success. Uh, a lot of positive feedback we received from community members. Uh, a lot of community members taken. Um, uh, thanking each other, but also thanking the task force for, for, for putting together those measures, again, to have an enjoyable time, to have something they could do with their family. And I do think it was something that was needed uh, you know, for, for everybody, you know, for the well-being of everybody, something to do different, something, something to have some, some, uh, uh, some enjoyment. And we also um, sponsored a, um, a, um, a Halloween costume picture contest, you know, asking people to submit uh, pictures uh, of their Halloween uh, costumes. Uh, and again, that was also a success. And uh, I'll leave it there and let Joe pick up uh, on that, uh, that point. But with that, everybody, uh, take care. Uh, see you soon. Uh, and here's Joe, we'll talk more about Halloween. All right, thanks, Lloyd. And uh, it, it really was uh, very successful. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. And the wind is blowing. Hold on a second here. <laughs> the big winds inside the, uh, the command center today. Um, as mentioned, Halloween, a big success. I know um, in our neighborhood, uh, we had at our house like 75 kids. And I know. People who live on Mortgage Lane and those who live out in the new development probably had about 500, but where I live, to get 75 uh, trick-or-treaters was just amazing. But it was fun. It was different. We were blessed by good weather, and we put out our table. My wife and I both dressed in Halloween garb, and uh, it, it was really nice to, to see 
the reaction of people, it, was, it wasn't your regular Halloween. A lot of parents had their kids with them and they came out and they, they spoke as well. They wanted to, they wanted to kind of share the joy that see we're doing something, we're able to do something within the rules and still have a good time. And one of the uh, things that uh, Gahnawaga 911 did, as Lloyd mentioned, was have a contest. We asked people to take photos or videos of, uh, of Halloween. And I had a chance to see uh, quite a few of the pictures already. And what we said was uh, submit them and we would spin a wheel and somebody could win a $50 gift certificate. Shop Gahnawaga gift certificate. So if uh, we're ready to go, guys, I think we can uh, move forward with our little contest. And you'll see, oh, there we go. We're just about, there's the big wheel there. So let's give it a spin. And somebody here, and there were like, there were about 147 entries here. So our winner is Garuhia Nordu, Phoebe Norton. Congratulations. Do we have the picture? Do we have? There's the picture. Oh, scary stuff, eh, kids? <laughs> all right. Congratulations. Again, uh, uh, you can see all of the, uh, the entrant, uh, the, those who made uh, submissions at Gahnawaga 911. And we'd like to thank everybody for making those sub submissions. And again, it was a great success. So congratulations, Garuhia Nordu. And uh, with that, we'd like to say thank you for watching. I'd like to say uh, thanks to uh, Raymond Bontor and Neil McCumber for filling in last week while I was on vacation. And uh, I'd also like to say, because uh, we don't get a chance to do, to do this very often, but uh, I guess many people know that Neil McCumber is uh, leaving us as the director of our public relations unit at the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. I've worked with him for about 20 years and he's going to be moving on to be the executive director at, uh, at Dewaduni Zakta. So I was glad that he uh, got a chance to fill in. He'd done uh, uh, several of these uh, Gahnawage 911 updates. So thanks, Neil, uh, for everything and best of luck. So with that, thank you very much, folks. Nyawako, and on behalf of all of us here at the Gahnawage COVID-19 Task Force, Nyawako Adano Onigiwahi.